Hi, and welcome everyone to the official European League of Football show. Today with the TU MVP, Nathaniel Robotai, wide receiver from Rheinfire. But first, we are taking a look at the results from week 13. Six games again, two on Saturday, and Berlin Thunder, they won against the Rams with 38 to 14. And then the Rheinfire beating the Centurions 59 to 33. On Sunday, we had our four games starting with the Barcelona Dragons playing in Vienna against the Vikings and losing, which means the Vikings winning 24 to 18. And then the Raiders Tirol losing against the Galaxy with 33 to 36. The Hamburg Sea Devils running over the Panthers with nothing to 17. And then last but not least, the Leipzig Kings winning in Stuttgart against the, th against the Surge with 38 to nothing. Well, that's been it with week 13 and now week 14, the last week of our regular season. I can't believe that it's almost over. And as we know, the Hamburg Sea Devils, the Vienna Vikings and the Barcelona Dragons, they all clinched their spots for the playoffs. However, we do not know who is going to make it on fourth position. Right now, it's looking very good for the Raiders. But all of our four fourth playoff seats contenders, they are with a seven and four record. So the Frankfurt Galaxy, the Berlin Thunder, and the Rhine Fire, they are all still trying their very best. But like I said, Raiders, well, it's looking very good for the Raiders. What we do know is that the Dragons will not play the playoff game at home. They are on third place, and the fourth plays against third, the second plays against fourth, and the Sea Devils and the Vikings are both still trying to get that for, for first place. So long story short, it is going to be an intense and very exciting week 14. If you want to know more about the calculation, you'll find a great article on the European League of Football website, which gives you all the stats and numbers. And then what comes after the playoffs, the championship game in Klagenfurt, of course. I want to see everybody over there. It's actually starting on the 24th on Saturday with a huge party around the stadium and then an even bigger party, a great fan party in the evening with the European League of Football Honours 2022. Awards will be given out to the best players of the season. Well, and then on Sunday, of course, the great championship game. I want to see you there. And right now, I am very much looking forward to seeing my guest today. Chio MVP, Nathaniel Robotai, wide receiver from Rheinfire. And I'm so glad that I said your name right. I think I did. <laughs> yeah, you did. Thank you. Thank you. Feeling dark. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much for being on the show today. And uh, well, congratulations for becoming the MVP. You had a very good game against the Centurions with 10 catches, 286 yards and four touchdowns. The Rheinfire fans must be very happy. And uh, you yeah. too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I've, sure, I've been happy all year. This is just a blessing to be, I mean, part of the organization, still playing football. Um, it was cool that they took a chance on me. And I told them, I said, hey, I've been playing a long time. So I just keep going and going and going until my legs don't work anymore. And <laughs> they gave me an opportunity. And that's what we've been doing. How optimistic are you that you can uh, still reach the playoffs with the Rheinfire? When it comes to football, I don't lie. So I'm just ready. To, I'm just ready to beat Leipzig. <laughs> that's, that's, all, that's all I care about right now. I'm just ready to beat Leipzig. Ready to play Leipzig well, from there. That's that actually would have been my my next question. Is the team <laughs> excited or maybe even nervous about this game, or are you not thinking about the playoffs at all, and you are nothing but looking forward to the next opponent, the Leipzig Kings? Yeah, I think you'd be a little a uh, little remiss if guys didn't think about uh, the playoffs and guys didn't think about our chances and stuff like that. Because, of course, um, European League of Football and, and what they do with media, I mean, it's all over the place. So guys and all these, they're younger, they're young, a little younger generation. So they're always on Instagram and social media checking stuff out. So they got all those stats and stuff from uh, the media. But I think Coach Tom Sewell has done a great job of letting guys know, like, hey, you can't skip anything. You can't skip any week, any game, any practice. You got to go to the next one in order to get to the next one. So I think he did a great job yesterday of, of kind of reassuring guys like it doesn't matter what goes on. We know we messed up by losing to Barcelona twice. So we have to go in the Leipzig game and win that last game. Eight and four is better than seven and five. Yes. 
that's for sure and mm -hmm. most likely you are let's say let's be optimistic the chances are quite high that you are going to win against leipzig let's be real here yeah. and uh but then you don't have it in your own hands because winning won't be enough how much does that bother you that you don't have it in your own hands to reach the uh, for me, for me, it didn't really bother me now because, like I said, I'm it's just a you want to win every game, but I'm just blessed to still be playing. And when we lost to Barcelona the second time, I mean, you, you still go to every game trying to win. And I know we, we as a team, some of us watched the Frankfurt game together. And to me, it was, yeah, it was cool if they got that point spread and stuff like that. But I'm, like I said before, I'm real. It doesn't. I, I don't want to leave anything to chance with somebody else. So it's, it's, it's out of our hands, out of my hands. There's really nothing we can do but just kind of go out and go to the next game, which is Leipzig. And summing up this whole regular season, would the Rheinfeier deserve to be in the playoffs, in your opinion? Shoot. I mean, I, I think so. <laughs> 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 I think so. I, th I, think if we, uh, I think if we got to the playoffs, right, as, as of right now, I think we're hitting stride. I, uh, I think as a team and as like an organization, we're really we had a little, little bit of a bumpy middle half of the season. I think if we made the playoffs right now, hitting stride, it'd be a, a pretty good show that we put on. So, yeah, regardless of what's going to happen, is the team is are you guys satisfied with your performance this season, the whole franchise? <laughs> I think as a whole. I think as a whole, they are as a franchise, as the Ryan Fire organization and fans and everybody, I think they are, everyone's talking about being its first year. It's, what is it? Erste's, Erste's I in the yes, European yeah. <laughs> They, uh, I think everybody's is pretty, is pretty, um, was excited, is, is happy, is, is what we did. But for me, I just know that there could have been a lot more. We, we could have did a lot more, so. Like? Like when? <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. And personally, how satisfied are you with your very own performance? Uh, I, I just, I, a couple, because I, I like to interact with the European League of Football guys and like the EFL, ELF Network and all those guys that do all that stuff because they work hard too. And uh, one of the guys said, "How would you, how would you talk to a fantasy football owner?" I said, "Each and every week, you're going to see a guy that just goes out, competes." and is always doing what he can do to help the team win. So, I mean, that, that's what I've been doing all year, and I, I feel like it's, it's, I've done a pretty decent job at it. And where do you see your strength as a wide receiver? Uh, right now, I think it's just knowledge of the game. I, I think it's knowing when I step to the line of scrimmage, um, I have a whole bunch of tools, and I saw a clip recently from Devontae Adams about having a bunch of tools in your in your mind when you step to the line of scrimmage no matter if it's press coverage zone coverage man um whatever it may be having a, t a bunch of tools in my mind where i can go either way or straight or use my strength or something speed just to get around the defender and, and make a play and keep the route integrity and uh help the play well you played division one college football and you came to europe in 2016 for your very first european football season mm -hmm. Now, compared to other teams you played for, what's the best about Ryan Fire, and what's what makes you guys special and different? Uh, well, yeah. So, just correct you real quick. It was D two. They're D one now, ah. which is cool though. Go, okay. go, Stone, go, yeah. Go Stonehill. Go ahead. Go, go have fun this year. Shout out to them. But um, I I don't know. It's uh, I think that Ryan Fire and other teams that I've played on in Europe is um. It's very different in the aspect of just because how much the game has grown since I've been here and and how much uh, kind of they're putting stock into football now. I know I know in the GFL, the ELF, um, I talked to one of my uh, buddies, AJ Wetland, who were playing this weekend, and I asked him, what's the difference do you see between the ELF and the GFL? And he said it's more even. It's across the board. Each team is more um, even. And I, I didn't I didn't really couldn't put my finger on it, but that's. When I really thought about it after we said that, that's that's exactly what it is. Each each team in the ELF is uh, you never know what's going to happen in a game. It's, each team is very. I mean, you right yeah. now you have it. There's three teams that are seven and four vying for a last playoff spot, and e and each of those teams yeah. could be the top three spots. You just never know. So I yeah. think that's that's one of the big differences. And I mean, 
when you play in the GFL like we had in the past. I mean, you could go into a game and just say, okay, we're going to beat this team by 50. So <laughs> it's just, this, is what, this is what it is. But I would say the European League of Football has been doing a great job of, of uh, keeping the teams very, very even keeled, which, which yeah. makes for good football. Yeah, yeah. It, the, the sports is definitely growing in Europe and also the league is growing. We have mm. four new teams joining, three more countries coming in in, in year three. What do you think about this development? I think it's great. I mean, it's it's good because it's going to add more games to the season, which if you're a football player, you love to play football. So add more, keep adding more teams, add more games. Uh, I would love to play a 17-game season again like I did in the GFL. That'd be awesome. But um, I think I think it's great for the league. It's great for Europe. And it's great for guys that, um, that want to help the game grow. So like when I'm done playing, I would definitely love to be a part of uh, the ELF or some organization and, and help the game grow in, in any way possible. So <laughs> Note it. <laughs> I know you need to speak to. <laughs> well, you definitely had some pretty exciting and fun games this season. What has been your highlight? Is there any moment that you are definitely going to remember for a long time? Uh, I mean, it, I would be, it would be crazy not, not to say the kick against Frankfurt that that uh that last oh second kick. yeah it, it, would, it would be crazy to not to say that i mean it was just oh, a, yes. i'm i'm not gonna lie when when they scored with like 20 seconds left <laughs> i was like i was like well we, we messed up in the in the fourth quarter when we fumbled on the three yard line i said that's our fault again so that my mindset was like ah oh, snap we just lost a a close game at home and it was crazy, but we still had to play. So my mind was thinking that, but I still had to go out there and play and shoot. We came out with a W and I was like, I, I told everybody, <laughs> I told everybody after the kick went in, I lost all composure and I, I usually keep my composure, but I lost it all. I was running on the field, yelling, jumping. I just lost my mind for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that even happened to me. I mean, yeah, see, it was, everybody. That, that game was awesome. It was, it, was, it was by far the best game I saw this season. It was it was unbelievable, and the yeah. atmosphere in the stadium. What crazy. do you think about the Ryan Fire fans? I mean, each yeah. and every home game is crazy. The amount of people coming to the games, the party before them cheering for you. How important is yeah. it for you guys? It, it's. It's very important because it, it it just that fan base that the love and support that you feel. I mean, every week you want to go into that game and you want to win. You you, you, just, you don't want to win just for the team and stuff. You want to win because everybody that's there that's supporting you. I mean, when when you got that many people in the stadium each week and you look out at the power party and there's thousands of people out there coming to watch you perform. I mean, it's a you you have to go out there and do your best and everything that you do. Yeah. You can't. Is yeah, they're they're great, and I, I wish I could. I wish there was a way where you could, I could see them all and meet them all, and, and instead of them watching me. But I mean, we'll figure it out one day. But that's yeah, <laughs> their fire friends are great, and I I didn't realize that. I mean, I definitely looked it up, the old Ryan Fire days, and and how they had all these fans and stuff like that. And I heard they had the biggest following, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I didn't really understand it until I got here. Yeah, and I said, wow, this is uh, it's a little different. Yeah. And uh, well, do you have a message for the Ryan Fire fans then? It's Before Liga they Nishan. come to, to the to the very last home game of the season. I'm gonna say everybody come out and it's Liebe dich alles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate that a lot. Yeah. And when speaking about favorite plays, do you have well, of course, that that field goal, well, that was insane, but do you have a personal favorite play or favorite touchdown that you um, did this season? I think I see. So this is what I had. This is what I had prepared because I, I figured I was doing this. I had my green gloves prepared, and I know this was a problem for the ELF when I, when, I, when I first played against Hamburg, and they told me to take them off because it didn't match the aesthetic of the uniform. Okay. I, I think it was the first touchdown against Hamburg when I when I uh, Matt threw a great pass, a crazy pass, and I caught it over one of the guys, and then I backpedaled into the end zone as I was stiff arming another guy. So I mean that was for me that was pretty cool. And then it just made it fun because sorry, uh D Dominique, I love yeah. you. I'm, I'm sorry I, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you at first about the gloves. <laughs> but it, it won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you very much for sharing this story. And I also have fan questions for you. Okay. So what about season three? Will the European League of Football fans see you again? Shoot, I hope so. I definitely hope so. That's that's my that, that's my plan is to keep playing. I, I told myself I would play until I was I couldn't go anymore. My body's kind of feeling that way right now, but <laughs> It's uh, but no, I I feel good, and um, I I hope that it either I, with Ryan Fire or, or whoever's here, wh whichever way it may go, because I know it's a business at the end of the day. Whichever way it may go, I, I hope that I'm still in the European League football some way somehow. Well, we hope that you come back. That's for sure. Who has been your toughest opponent this year? Mm, toughest opponent, probably. I mean, I used. I think I think you got to say Hamburg probably because they they came in and uh, they they did a pretty good job kind of kind of containing us on offense there those the, the couple games that we played them I think that was a very tough opponent and I mean they're number one for a reason that defense is good so they uh, probably say Hamburg for sure. And what's going to be the first thing that you do after the season? <sighs> Sleep. <laughs> 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 probably, probably sleep. No more gym for a week. Yeah, probably, probably sleep. Maybe try to hit a small beach vacation or something. I, I, uh, there's one thing I like to do, and that's go to amusement parks. So I think I've been. To I love that as well. Roller yeah, coasters are the best. <laughs> exactly. So I think I've been to like every amusement park on the eastern part of uh, Germany. Now I'm trying to venture out to different places and see if I can find some more. There are, so you have been to the Six Flags in Belgium and the Netherlands as well? Oh, no, there's only in Germany, because there are, there, are, there are some great parks, yeah. There's, there's a Six Flags in Belgium? Yeah, or, or Netherlands, or maybe even both, I'm not sure, but definitely Six Flags, yes. Yeah, I'm going to have to Google that. I'll Google that. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, next question, we kind of spoke about it already. The home oh. game versus Galaxy, to what extent did you feel the incredible atmosphere in the stadium in the last few seconds? It was, it was uh, you, you don't really hear it on the field. Like, uh, so honestly, I just, I, I'm just not really paying attention. There, there was, there was points in time where you can sit back and like, you're not in the game and you just look up and you just hear it. It's like, wow, it's louder than you think. But um, when that kick went through, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I lost all composure. <laughs> and I was, I was screaming and yelling just as much as they were. So <laughs> that happened to a lot of people in that moment. <laughs> Trust yeah. me. <laughs> what would you have become if you hadn't become a football player? Shoot, probably I probably would have did something like this. Uh, I went to school for um, communications, broadcast communications, and interpersonal communications. So probably something along the lines of this, where I'm um, speaking to people, influencing people, helping people, and yeah, probably def definitely something with people, and definitely probably something with football um, or sports in general. Okay. Well, and speaking about your opponents, who was the most difficult defensive back to play against this year? Uh, shoot, I don't know. I, I probably, probably all of them, because you just you just never because when you go into a game and you, you can watch so much film, and you just never know what's going to happen. I mean, yeah. even a guy that you think that you're going to beat is you, you can run a perfect route, and he just may be in your way some way somehow. <laughs> So it's just I can't. There's no really name I can put to it, but it's probably just like, just there. They each guy that I've played all has a little niche that it's kind of like, all right, I have to really watch out for his hip. I have to watch out for his hands. I have to watch out for his feet, his shuffle. I mean, each guy that I played, they're there for a reason. They got picked to play, and then then they, then they got picked to cover me. So they're, they're they're there for a reason. So I think I mean all of them bring something different to the game that I had to really look at and study and and kind of use my tools and go against them. But you managed to do that. Do you have a favorite song? <laughs> favorite song? Um, right now, it is probably Graves in the Gardens by uh, Elevation Worship. That's probably one of my favorite songs, if not my favorite song. Do you listen to that before the game then? Do you have like any pregame routine? Well, yeah. So every, so every Sunday for me is Gospel Music Sunday. So I always listen to gospel music or, or some Christian type of music. And then we played every Sunday. So that's been my pregame music. And it's actually really calming. 
it's okay. it's really it's really really calming and it's really kind of puts you in zen mode instead of like the whole head banging and rap music and hip hop and I, f I I mean I did that when I was in college and younger <laughs> yeah we did that and did all those music whatever but this is it's been different this year with that and just keeping to my tradition of gospel music Sunday and it's just I I'm just ready to play every game just not not thinking about anything it's been fun yeah, yeah. and uh, Jim or Altstadt coach Jim no, Jim, like, oh. this is workout. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll take Coach Jim on. <laughs> well, well, we, we can, we can. Okay. Second follow-up question. <laughs> Coach Jim or I said, but first, Jim, Coach, workout Jim. Uh, um, I'd probably say go to the gym. That's what we're going to do next. Go to the gym, get in the sauna, stretch, and then go to the all and get uh, it's, I guess. Well, you can right. have both. That's that's true. Yeah, exactly. And then head coach Jim or Altstadt. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, but he's been talking about it. Coach Jim in the Altstadt with us. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that's going to be a lot of fun. I hope so. Do you have a favorite touchdown celebration? Uh, just hand the ball to the ref. Actually, no, I can't say that. We, uh, I got to shout out Marvin. I, for me, I, I just hand the ball to the ref and just get to the sideline all, all that jumping up and i've seen too many guys hurt themselves so i said i ah, just 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 hit me on the head or pat my chest high five but there was one touchdown we had against istanbul and all year um one of our players marvin number 88 big 88 he uh he had his move he got hit and i think he might have had a small slight concussion and he spun and fell okay and, yeah and so our um uh, that was our, it was, it was a running joke. And I said, Marvin, if you ever score a touchdown, we're going to do the Marvin dance. And against Istanbul, it happened. We did it. And everybody loved it. Coach Jim was confused, but everybody else knew what was going on. So I'd say. I saw that. I remember I mean, it. <laughs> I think that for me, I mean, it was just, it was great to see him get a touchdown and then for him to do the dance too. Yeah. That, that's probably the best one of the year. Oh, wonderful. And now the last question, when and why did you start playing football and why did you come to Europe? I started playing football when I was about seven years old. Um, and it was just kind of the next thing to do when, when you're younger. I mean, I started playing baseball at age three and then it was uh, baseball season and then I had to do something in the fall. So it was like, okay, go to football. And then it was basketball in the spring. And that was just kind of my rotation all the way until college. And uh, I just kind of fell in love with it more and more. And I just got a little bit better at it. And I was a quarterback back in the day from when I started. So I graduated. So uh, I just kind of fell in love with it and fell in love with the process and the game. And I think that's what a lot of kids are missing is fall in love with the process of um, being at a high level football, like talent and being able to do it at a high level is that it takes a, it's a time it's a time thing that you have to kind of do to get there it's not just hey I pick up a football go play because you'll get <laughs> you'll get humbled really fast <laughs> and then um I think uh why did I when did I come why did I come to Europe funny story my my old college teammate Nate Morris he's do he's trying to do his uh his little Stephen A Smith stuff for the European League of Football so he talks to me a lot but um he started in 2016 in 2015 in Swabish Hall. And I, I, I kept tabs on him a little bit and he came back and he said, Hey, I got an opportunity to play, um, play in Europe again. It's an awesome experience. And I, I told him, okay, I'm, I'm still working on some uh, NFL, CFL stuff over here. Just give me a, a little bit of time. And I got on a call with coach Kosling in March, 2016. And I was on a flight at the end of the month in March in 2016. And the rest is kind of history. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. thank you so very much for sharing all of this. And thank you for being on the show today. It was a great pleasure to finally meet you. Yeah, for and real. Uh, again, congratulations and best of luck for Sunday for the game against the Kings. And maybe we will see you in the playoffs. That would be a fairy tale <laughs> yeah. story. Yeah, danke schön, danke schön. That's, uh, man, th thank you for this. And uh, thank you guys for just being such a great. Uh, organization this this whole league and all that stuff and appreciate you guys and yeah if, if we make the playoffs uh it'll just be another blessing <laughs> yes it will be and if not this season hopefully next year oh we're trying to go with the you again yeah we're trying to win the championship <laughs> next season that's that's the main goal that's
that's the main goal exactly yeah. so thank you very much and hope to see you soon thank you yes Likewise. thank you bye bye <laughs> ciao ciao well and now let's see what we can look forward to week 14 the very last weekend of our regular season saturday with two games the cologne centurions playing against the rams and then the hamburg sea devils going all the way to spain playing against the dragons and on sunday oh this is going to be an exciting day we have the raiders playing against the thunder we have the search playing against the galaxy the kings playing against the rhine fire and the vikings playing against the panthers I can just guarantee that it is going to be intense and exciting. So, European League of Football fans, don't miss it. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the weekend, and I'll see you again next week.